Welcome back. Covering Northern Palm Beach County, Tequesta Fire Rescue hosting a class for first responders aimed at keeping people safe in the water. The Swift Water Rescue Course aims to teach people how to handle dangerous situations. And here to talk more about it is John Castillo Jr. from Tequesta Fire Rescue. Thank you for being Morning. here. I appreciate Thank it. You. Um, we got a lot of bodies of water here, yes, so we do. this is really important. Yes, it is. Okay, so tell us about the course. So the course, it's a swift water rescue combo course. Uh, to Quest of Fire, we host it in conjunction with Dive Rescue International out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, this is our fourth year now hosting it. Um, Dive Rescue, they provide the instructors, the uh, syllabus, and the gear. And basically every year they come out and they teach first responders, both police and fire, how to perform service water rescue. And is this, this like an ever-changing process it is. because of like technology It, it always stuff? is. It always is. Every year it's different. Uh, the good thing about Dive Rescue International is they came here and they they made the class specific mm -hmm. for this area because okay. swift water is different oh. here than in North Carolina or Colorado. So they came down here and did that for us. Oh, that's so, interesting. So yes. we know how, you guys need to know how to navigate our waterways. Yes. Obviously. Yes, correct. And yes. so um, obviously you'll have people from Tequestify Rescue, yes. but people from all over the area. Yes, we've had people from all over the state and the southeast region. Uh, I believe this year we had people from Tampa Fire wow. Police, uh, Tequesta Police or Tequesta Fire. So uh, the course, like I said, is being held next week starts next Monday and it's a uh, it's a five day 40 hour course and so, so. this is going to help save lives this yes. is a big deal yes it is yeah this is um, how many water rescues do you guys see on it a, depends it, we get a couple every year sure uh, it's one of those things that it doesn't happen often but when it does happen you know what what you're doing yeah absolutely because so. it's dangerous for yes. you guys as yeah. well all right well thank you so much thanks for going through all thank that you. training thanks for thanks making for sure me. that everyone is safe because like we said goodness you're talking about a lot of water here yes. in our area yes. so we appreciate all you do. Thank you for keeping us safe. If you want more information on this program, we have a link to all the information on our website, WPBF.com. Always working for us. Thank you. Sandra? All right. Thanks a lot, Aaron. And uh, let's take a look at what we've got going outside right now. Jupiter Inlet looking gorgeous with the lighthouse here. And basically, we have clear skies, a couple clouds out there, not many. We're on the heels of just a beautiful dry season weekend. We started out in the 50s on the Treasure Coast. Now we've jumped back up to 70. It's 70 in Vero Beach, down through Port St. Lucie. Down into Stewart, we're in the upper 60s in and around the lake. It's 70 in Jupiter, 74 out at PBIA, and 75 in South County. We're en route to a daytime high of 80 to 81 today. Again, high pressure is dominant, lower than average humidity, and this dry season trend is going to carry us forward for the first time really this year for a seven-day stretch. I mean, just beautiful. 81 today, 63 tonight, so still a little cooler. Tomorrow, 82, bright sunshine. Wednesday, we up the ante a bit with the temperature, 84 degrees, 85 on Thursday. And again, continued dryness. We'll see a little more humidity try to creep back with 87 on Friday. Saturday, 88, 90 on Sunday. So definitely more of a summertime weekend with the lows in the 70s as well for Saturday and Sunday up to 90. But, you know, it's going to take a long time to get from that 80, 81 to 90 over the next seven days. So enjoy it while you can. Great stretch. We have a high pressure anchor to our east. And so around that, we have a clockwise motion of the winds, which puts the winds out of the east and over the land. So that will mean a heightened risk of rip currents. They're at moderate today, but will be elevated to high probably as soon tomorrow. So heads up on that very high UV index. I mean, you can get burned in just a matter of minutes out there. East winds again, 10 to 15 and sees only a couple of feet. Sandra, thank you. Well, the clock is ticking. Today is tax day, which means you have until 1159 tonight to file your taxes. ABC's Alexa, Alexis Christophorus has what you need to know to get it all done. It's tax day. If you haven't filed yet, don't freak out. You still have time to file. You can go online and file up until midnight in your time zone. If you won't be able to file by midnight, go to irs.gov and request an extension, which will give you an additional six months to submit your taxes until October 15th. But remember, extension to file is not an extension to pay. If you don't make an estimated payment by tonight, your balance is subject to interest and a monthly late payment penalty. If you owed last year and your income and your tax situation is basically the same, you owe this year. So here's what you do. Go to irs.gov, make a payment, whatever payment it was last year. Even if you file an extension, if you're expecting a refund, the sooner you file your taxes, the sooner you'll get your money. And the majority of people do get a refund, so that should encourage people 
The IRS will issue most refunds within 21 days or less if you file electronically with direct deposit. You can check the status of your refund on irs.gov with the Where's My Refund tool. It only updates once a day. It updates in the middle of the night and it'll tell you where in the process your refund is and approximately when you're going to get that refund. Think about how you can put your refund to good use. Maybe put some money towards savings, some money towards debt payoff, especially credit card debt, because that's likely your highest cost debt. Maybe carve out a little fun money while you're at it, too. I mean, we can't be all work and no play, right? Lastly, tax time is a great opportunity to check up on your finances. It really is a valuable x-ray of where you've been and where you're going. Honestly, if you get a big refund this year, the best approach might be to adjust your withholding so that you get more of that in your paycheck throughout the year. I know everybody loves getting a refund, but frankly, it's your money that you've lent to the government with an interest-free loan for many months. So I like the idea of trying to break even at tax time. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. And for many people, tax season isn't only about gathering W-2 forms or calling an accountant. It's also about being bringing intense stress and anxiety on how you're going to deal with your finances. Psychologists say that a good first step is to make a detailed plan to tackle your taxes, break down all the steps, and start completing them just one by one. And if you identify that fear is what's stopping you from filing, ask yourself if whatever you're afraid of is likely going to happen. Also, talk with friends and family. That can really help. Also, take self-care breaks. Get outside. Just take a break. It's okay. You can also talk to a tax professional for support. New here at 9, if you have Verizon, you could get money as part of a lawsuit that accuses the carrier of charging deceptive fees. Users have until today to sign up for the class action settlement that can be done online or through the mail. Customers who use Verizon between January 2016 and November of last year can get up to $100. Verizon denies any wrongdoing. The company says it will continue charging the fees and has every right to increase them. All right, one of the most anticipated drafts in sports history happens tonight. Three dozen pro basketball hopefuls preparing for the WNBA draft. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the top prospects to watch and the changes to this year's draft. We're just hours away from one of the most anticipated drafts in sports history. Caitlin Clark, all but certain to be the number one overall pick. You make a lot of jokes about women's sports, don't you, Michael? On Saturday Night Live, she scolded Weekend Update host Michael Che for roasting the WNBA's popularity and forced him to read jokes she had written. The Indiana Fever have the first pick in this Monday's draft. A reminder that Indiana Fever is a WNBA team and not what Michael Che gave to dozens of women at Purdue University. Back in December, the Fever won the lottery to choose first and hit the jackpot. Clark's expected arrival sent ticket prices through the roof, more than doubling. And now most of their games will be on national TV. In terms of attention, we've never, ever, ever seen anything like this. Clark, along with South Carolina center Camilla Cardozo and UCLA guard Kiki Rice are profiled in an upcoming ESPN docuseries. This moment showing Clark's competitive spirit when she was a girl learning to ride a bike. So I like got out my pink bike and I'm like, mom, take my training wheels off. Let's go. Hey, now that Blake's learned to ride, Katie's giving it a shot and she's doing quite well. Another top contender in tonight's draft, Angel Reese. Despite the LSU forward stardom, analysts do not expect her to be chosen in the top five due to worries about whether she can be effective in the pros. What is for certain, these players are driving historic interest in women's hoops. The national title game scored bigger TV ratings than the men's. Clark, oh my! And tonight's draft will be the first in nearly a decade with a live audience. Even SNL's Michael Che will acknowledge it's a slam dunk for the sport. Thank you. I, I can't wait to give this to my girlfriend. You don't have a girlfriend, Michael. <laughs> All right. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Covering your community, the West Palm Beach Green Market needs your help, keeping its title as best farmer's market in the country. The Green Market has held the title for three straight years in the USA Today's best 10 best list. Today, last chance to vote. To make it a four-peat, you can scan the QR code right there at the bottom of your screen to vote. The deadline, 11.59 this morning. You have to do it before noon. The winner will be announced next Wednesday. And a quick reminder, the final Green Market of the season, no, it's almost over, is this Saturday. Well, parking concerns in West Palm Beach, the proposed changes that city leaders are considering today and how it aims to address neighborhood concerns. Plus, historic trial in the making. Former President Donald Trump is in a New York courtroom right now preparing for his first criminal trial. What to expect 
as jury selection begins this morning. You're watching WPBF 25 News at 9. You're watching WPBF 25 News at 9. It is 930. Happy Monday. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Erin Guy. Natalie's on assignment. Want to start with Sandra Shaw talking about the beautiful forecast we can expect. I wish we were on the beach right there behind you, Sandra. <laughs> it looks so inviting and people are already out there. Erin, this is a gorgeous shot. You see one little wispy cloud right here, a little alto cumulus, kind of solitary, but gorgeous sky conditions really on the heels of what was a weekend of dry, seasonable conditions for the area. A cooler start than average, though. Very brisk on the Treasure Coast this morning. We were actually down to 53 up in Fort Drum and we saw some mid 50s, but we've jumped up to 70 now for the majority of the Treasure Coast. It's 74 in West Palm and 75 in Boca. So we're well on our way with all that sun. It warms us up quickly. We'll be about 80, 81 this afternoon. If you're keeping track, 81 is our average high for this April the 15th. So stability with high pressure and around that high, we'll get some east winds off the ocean. Sandra, thank you. A big story this morning, a historic moment in court today. This is a live look in New York where Donald Trump will become the first former president to stand trial on criminal charges. A live look there as you are seeing him pass through security. This again happening right now. He arrived at the courthouse, got out of his SUV about 30 minutes ago. But as you can see here, a lot of security, a lot of press on hand as he's about to go into the courtroom. He is required to be in the courtroom. All days, it appears he's ad addressing some people right there. We are not hearing the audio right this second, but we can tell you he's required to be in the courtroom throughout this trial. Um, he's accused of using campaign funds to pay off adult film star Stormy Daniels. Let's listen in and hear what he has to say. Necessarily follow or like Donald Trump. 
said this is an outrage that this case was brought. This is political persecution. This is a persecution. There's been a lot of talk on what he is allowed to say when he's outside of the courtroom, perhaps will be addressed today when they are working to select jurors. Jurors will be asked a handful of questions. This will be a very lengthy process. Again, this happening in Manhattan. We do know that there is a lot of um, commotion, as you can imagine, going on around the courthouse um, with this all started later on this morning. Again, he has arrived. We're going to watch it for you very closely. ABC's Perry Russom is also outside of the courtroom in New York with more on how Trump is reacting to what's going to happen today when it comes to jury selection. Good morning. Sources are describing former President Trump's mood as angry and irritated as we headed to jury selection this morning. The first ever criminal trial for a former president. This morning, hundreds of potential jurors will be asked 42 questions, including have you ever attended a rally or campaign event for Donald Trump? Do you currently follow Donald Trump on any social media site? And do you have any feelings or opinions about how Mr. Trump is being treated in this case? Trump and his lawyers have tried to stall this trial and move it out of New York, accusing the judge of being biased, claiming the jury pool is tainted and saying the limited gag order against Trump is unfair. Trump is accused of falsifying business records to hide a payment he made to former fixer Michael Cohen to pay off adult film actress Stormy Daniels to keep her quiet about a long denied affair. Prosecutors say Trump falsified documents to hide that information from voters in the 2016 election. The defendant claimed that he was paying Michael Cohen for legal services performed in 2017. This simply was not true. Trump has pleaded not guilty. Will Sharp, one of Trump's attorneys, on Fox yesterday. I think it's really important to note that the fact that this case is being brought at the height of election season uh, makes the process of picking a jury even more difficult. Cohen and Daniels are expected to testify in this trial, as well as Hope Hicks, a longtime Trump aide. Jury selection could last a week. Perry Russell, ABC News, New York. Well, new this morning, we've learned that a priest was stabbed during a live stream. It happened in New South Wales, Australia. We are working right now to see exactly how many others were hurt. Police say that the video shows a man interrupting the sermon and then violently attacking the police. The suspect now under arrest. This all happened just days after another stabbing at a mall in Sydney. Six people were killed on that stabbing. The suspect was shot and killed by police. The motive for both of these stabbings still being investigated. New this morning, a judge is set to hear arguments over the deadly Astro World Festival that happened in Houston. Ten people were killed after a massive crowd surged during a show. Rapper Travis Scott headlining the concert. This was in 2021. Now, Scott is trying to dismiss the lawsuit, saying he was just the performer and had no role in providing security or crowd management for the festival. Just last week, the judge dismissed lawsuits against hip hop guest performer Drake, along with several others involved in the show. Local doctors are raising awareness on a possible shortage of physicians here in our state. A local organization wants to ensure that that just doesn't happen. The T. Leroy Jefferson Medical Society hosted the Stars of Tomorrow's Symposium. This is at Inlet Grove Community School in Riviera Beach. Hundreds of students from different counties came together this weekend to explore and learn about different fields in healthcare. The former president of the society says several factors like age and population growth can contribute to the doctor shortage. The whole spectrum of different careers that they can go into, not only being a doctor, but a hospital administrator, insurance company executive, medical device rep, with or without a stethoscope, they can be in the field of medicine. It's fabulous. It's recession proof. It's the students also had the opportunity to learn life saving procedures like CPR. Looks like a good turnout. Well, happening today in West Palm Beach, city leaders are set to discuss how they can address parking concerns in certain neighborhoods. This all comes as people who live in the area say construction has been a real challenge. And it's not just because of traffic. City commissioners will look to limit the amount of construction vehicles and have major projects come up with a traffic management plan. The proposal could also require permits for street parking in designated residential areas. Fees for violators could also increase. Keep in mind, this is the first reading of the ordinance, so nothing will become official today. Happening today on the Treasure Coast, a key meeting on a program to help people become homeowners in Port St. Lucie. The City Council will hear an update on the down payment assistance program and a recommendation that is be funded by the Mortgage Assistance Fund surplus. This includes $408,000. The Council will vote on whether or not to approve the revision. Residents will also learn more on the recovery process of the boardwalk damage during Hurricane Nicole. That was in 2022. The boardwalk connects Veteran Park and Rivergate Boat Ramp to Tom Hooper Park. 
coming to Google phones, the SOS connection that can help you during an emergency, even if you don't have a signal. Plus, making dental care accessible to all ages. A local college teaming up with local dentists. We talk with organizers about the free event happening in your community and how you can get involved. Thanks for choosing us. WPBF 25 News at 9. We'll be right back. Covering your community, you know, it's estimated one in four adults have untreated tooth decay and money can be the main reason people are not able to address it. But for the first time since the pandemic, Palm Beach State College is teaming up with local dentists to help people address some dental issues and they're doing it all for free. So joining me now is Professor Colleen Bradshaw, chair of the college's dental assisting program um, and department. Colleen there at the end, thank you so much. And Dr. Camille Dixon, who is one of the dentists volunteering for this event. Doctor, thank you both for being thank here. You. Um, Professor Bradshaw, I'll start with you. This is still happening on Wednesday. Tell us about the event. This, is, this event started in 2015. Mm -hmm. Uh, with a collaboration between the Atlantic Coast Dental Research Clinic and Palm Beach State College Dental Assisting Program. Uh, we started out with 25, treating 25 patients, and then we saw how many patients that we needed to turn away. So we doubled that the following year. So um, this event um, is the first event, like you had said, since uh, COVID. So it's the, our last event was 2019. So we're really excited to be able to, to offer this. So kind of how event. are you preparing for what's likely going to be a pretty big group of people? <laughs> well, we, we did have a uh, pretty much a down pat. We've, uh, we've had uh, people donating, you oh, know, wonderful. dental uh, companies do donating um, items yeah. and we've been collecting for a few months now and just getting the students involved and faculty and 
Um, and volunteers. And yes. volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> and, and doctor, you've decided to give um, a lot of your time to, to make this event possible. Mm -hmm. Have you, even in your offices, have you seen after the pandemic some changes in dental care? Oh, definitely. So um, everybody's fearful of the dentist. And sure. COVID kind of gave that, <laughs> incentivized that. It gave us an know. excuse to skip the appointments, right. didn't exactly, it? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh, and we saw so many broken teeth from the pandemic. Everybody was stressed, you know, sure. they, they were you know under, under amount of stress and they were grinding their teeth. And we were, um, when, when, our, when we were able to open back up, a lot of patients had bro broken teeth. Wow. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is a great service. Um, it's great to serve the community yeah. and provide a need. And so what kind of services are you gonna provide? We're going to be doing um, simple extractions and fillings. That is it. Okay, we're not gotcha. doing no cleanings or no, no okay. cleanings, no routine exams. Um, please, we're trying to um, help the patients in need and that are in pain. That's what I was going to so, say. Yeah. So if it's more elective, like oh, I, my dentist told me I needed a cavity, I need to go get it filled. This is not. We're this we're is... here to help the people who don't have access to care or maybe not have the funds to get a tooth extracted and or in pain. And that was what I was going to ask. Who qualifies? Mm. If someone's watching, saying, oh my goodness, this could really help me. Well, um, again, it would just be the patients that are needed okay. and, and patients that would not otherwise be able to go to the dentist. And it's adults only? Adults only, okay. 18 and older. Okay, give us the details, where it is. Oh, we just had it on the screen right now. Where it is, what time, when should they show up? Because I was saying, okay. I've been to events like this and people show up early to make yeah, sure they get in line. Yeah, they really do. Uh, well, the campus doesn't open until 6 o'clock. Um, and then we have the, the triage doctors coming in around 7.30 and then hopefully we'll start treatment around 8 o'clock. So it's going to be on the Lake Worth campus, mm -hmm. uh, which is 4200 South Congress Avenue. Um, just be mindful too that uh, I-95 and 6th Avenue is still closed. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, and, and another uh, uh, suggestion would be to uh, be prepared to wait. Be prepared to yeah, wait. Prepared but to your wait. oral health is yes. a huge deal with yes. your overall health, so it's important to Absolutely. take care of those things. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for donating you. your Thank time. You. That's, it's a wonderful thing to do for our community. If you do want to learn more, we put a link to this event on our website, so you can go read about it, know exactly where to go and what time to show up. You can go to our website, WPBF.com. Thanks for being with us. Thanks. Appreciate it.